Hey, what's up guys? This is Atreek here from uh, smartbytrainers.com. Uh, just wanted to start 2019 with some Q&As, plus trying to get ready for CS this week in Las Vegas. This is my first time there. I'm not exactly sure what to expect. All I know is I'll be seeing a lot of cool tech and a ton of people. Uh, so one little tidbit here uh, about these events. When you register as a media person for any of these trade shows, you start getting a lot of invites from different vendors to stop by their booth and check out their products. And for the past few weeks, I've gotten more invites to do a brain scan than anything else. Uh, is brain scan the next big thing in tech? And honestly, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with anyone doing a brain scan on me at a show, uh, especially in Las Vegas. But if you've been to CS and have any tips and on navigating the venue or venues, uh, let me know. I feel like I'm gonna need some help there. Uh, also, thank you guys for your support. It really means the world to me. I started this channel to compliment my work on the website and I had no idea what to expect. Just being able to make stuff and share here just been really amazing. And without your support, this channel will be nowhere. So thank you and I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so these are some of the questions I got from uh, on social media, emails, and through private messages. And uh, the first one, any news updates on the iOS Wahoo ANT plus dongle issue? Uh, I think you're talking about the 11.2 iOS update where some user reported uh, where their iOS devices stopped recognizing their ANT plus key. I have not experienced that issue. I think it's fine. Uh, my iOS device still recognizes it. I tested it with Trainer Road, Sufferfest, and many other apps, and it still finds the ANT Plus key, no problem. However, should you get the ANT Plus key, if you don't have it already, I'll probably avoid it just because Wahoo has not updated the ANT Plus key in quite a while. Plus, you need to get an adapter to fit with your iPhone or mobile device uh, uh, port. Uh, by the time you get the key and the adapter, you will end up probably paying more than what you would pay for the cable or the 4i hot rate monitor. And th that cable device would basically does the same thing. All it does is just take an ANT plus signal, like a signal from your hot rate monitor or a foot pod, and convert that to Bluetooth so your iOS device can see that. Any thoughts on apps other than Zwift? Uh, apps. Uh, I'll plan on doing uh, a lot more reviews on apps this year, uh, but uh, this is what we have right now. There are a lot of apps entering the markets in beta and they seem to be stuck in beta and not getting out of that beta zone. Uh, but the current apps are currently in production and they have been also upgrading their apps throughout the year. Uh, Train Road, Sufferfest, uh, Ruby, uh, if you like, Virtual Riding is Full Gas, and also Kino Map. Uh, another app worth uh, giving a try is Exert. Uh, doesn't get a lot of mention, but I plan on doing more of an in-depth look at it. It's a pretty good app and they released an iOS version of that this year as well. So those are the apps I would take a look at. Next question, uh, is it normal for the same wattage to feel harder when you go from an outdoor ride to an indoor trainer? Uh, yes, uh, generally it is. So when you're outdoor, you got the better road feel, you got the inertia, you got distraction from the scenery, from other riders, from drivers around you. When you go indoor, you lose all of that. Uh, so uh, trainers have been trying to replace that road feel with bigger flywheels and the higher end trainers do a pretty decent job at that. They're not there yet, but they're getting close. Also, the other thing is just get a good fan. That cooling, that air that you have outside, you miss that indoor and your body temperature will rise up a lot faster and the ride will start to feel a lot harder. So get a good fan and also just have a structured workout, uh, whether it's a structured workout with interval or have a plan to either join a group ride or a race on Zwift. Uh, these things tend to make the riding indoor a lot easier and time will fly by a lot faster. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it and you'll find ways to distract yourself. Okay, uh, need a new bike trainer. I trust your opinion. Any basic thoughts to share directions to look in? Uh, bike trainers, it all depends on what you're looking for and your budget. Uh, if you're looking for a wheel on trainers, uh, you have the Kicker Snap and the uh, Cyclops Magnus. However, with a wheel on trainer, I tend to shy away from recommending wheel on trainer just because of the accuracy issue and also they require a lot more calibration. And uh, where direct drive trainers, you don't have to do that calibration as often and they tend to be a lot more uh, accurate and also quiet and they also provide a better road feel. So on the direct drive side, I would go 
uh, you have the higher end trainers and the mid range trainers. The higher end trainers, they all tend to be very close. So you have the Tax Neo, uh, that's a trainer that I personally use. Uh, you also have the Wahoo Kicker 2018 model, and I also use that one. Uh, those are very quiet. If you can tolerate some noise, uh, take a look at the Cycle Ops H2 or the Hammer. And I'll probably go with the Hammer just because you can probably get the Hammer which is a higher end trainer for less than a thousand dollar now. Uh, as far as the mid-range trainers, I would take a look at the Wahoo Kicker Core, that would be my pick, uh, the Tax Flux. Uh, the Tax Flux 2, I just, I'm getting that one, I think uh, today uh, or tomorrow, sometime this week, hopefully. And uh, the, or the Flux S, and also the Elite Diary 2. Those are pretty good trainers and they are not as loud and also tend to be very uh, good on the accuracy side. Question in regard to the Garmin heart rate monitor. I'm trying to connect my Garmin H uh, heart rate monitor to Zwift, but for some reason I'm unable to pair it. Any clue? Uh, the Garmin heart rate monitors are ANT Plus only. So if you're trying, if you're using Zwift on a mobile device such as your iPhone or Apple TV or your iPad, it's not going to connect. You need to convert the ANT Plus signal to Bluetooth. So getting a device like the cable or 4i would solve that issue for you, and uh, or just get a a Bluetooth heart rate monitor like uh, one uh, from Wahoo or something like that. Uh, if you run Zwift on a Windows PC or a Mac, then all you need is an ANT Plus dongle uh, to connect to your USB port and it should see your heart rate monitor or any ANT Plus device you have. Hi, I'm looking for a light portable trainer I can bring on short business trips for uh, some trainer road intervals. Uh, need to be something with a quick setup, compact and light. I was consider considering the Halcyon without the wheel weights. Uh, the Amium would be would also be an option, but no power control. What would you recommend? The Halcyon is a good option. If you're looking for a smart trainer that is portable and very light, the Halcyon is probably, it is actually the lightest trainer out there. Plus it is very quiet. So if you're in a hotel room, you're not gonna be bothering the guests around you. And that is very important. Uh, but as far as portability, if you have a power meter on your bike and you can get away with that smart functionalities, I would go with the Omnium. It is pretty portable and that would be my pick. I have a power meter on my bike and that is a trainer that I usually take with me when uh, traveling to races or on business trips. Uh, so yeah, the Omnium would be my pick if you're looking for a smart trainer. The Halcyon is pretty light and pretty portable. You probably can fit it in a suitcase when you take it with you. Uh, how many Ironman did you do? Uh, I did a total of four full Ironman, the 140.6 distance. Uh, the last one I did was in 2015. Uh, and the half Ironman I did a lot. Uh, I think if I want to guess it would be more than 20 half Ironman. Uh, for a period of time I was doing four to five per year. Uh, I would like to get into the full though. I'm probably gonna try to do that in the next uh, year or so. I just need to figure out that time and the training that I'm willing to put into it. Uh, about the, okay, this is the last question. Uh, about Technogym Skill Bike, the fact that it supports only Bluetooth, do I have limits to use with Zwift, with iOS? I don't have that bike personally, but based on the specs, it only works with Bluetooth and it only works with their My Cycling app and Zwift. So if you wanna try to use it with any other app, it's not gonna work and it will only work in Bluetooth. Uh, so right now Zwift can run in Bluetooth basically in all applications, whether you're using Windows or Mac, it should work just fine. But if you want to transition to using something different like Trainer Road or Ruby, uh, the skill bike is not gonna work. Uh, if you're open to other brands, uh, I would personally try the Tax Neo uh, Smart Bike that is uh, compatible with ANT Plus, Bluetooth and uh, FTMS and they just have a lot more options than the scale bike. So that will be my pick if you're open to other brands and if you're looking for a stationary bike. All right, that's all I have. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. And you know the drill. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.